Bottled water is really the ultimate commodification of our water commons, and it's the fastest growing segment of the commercial beverage industry. And let's make no mistake, uh, the production of bottled water causes many equity, public health, and environmental problems. Consumers collectively spend about $100 billion worldwide on bottled water. Uh, the former chairman of Perrier, which is part of Nestle, put it very candidly. He said, it struck me that all you had to do was take the water out of the ground and then sell it for more than the price of wine, milk, or for that matter, oil. And so over the past 15 years or so, we have seen a major advertising campaign to make bottled water hip and sexy for the young and for the health conscious concerned, the strategy was to make them concerned about hydration and contamination. The truth of the matter is that in almost all cases, municipal water is safer. It's regularly tested and it has to meet national standards by, on, for chemicals and bacteria. And you can go to any municipal water utility and ask for the testing results, which eventually must go to EPA. Bottled water is rarely tested by the Food and Drug Administration. In fact, the Food and Drug Administration has under 2,000 inspectors for 300,000 food facilities in the U.S. and internationally. Overall, for our food, they inspect a less than 1%. So bottled water is not being inspected. So let's not be uh, taken in by, uh, by this advertising campaign. The National Resources Defense Council conducted a really landmark study a few years ago, and they found that one out of three brands of bottled water had chemical or bacterial contamination, especially if it sits on the shelf for a long time. The bottles come from the plastic made from crude oil and chemicals, and chemicals such as polyethylene and phylates can leach from the bottle into the water that you drink. Not to mention the 2.7 million tons of plastic used in bottled water every year and the mountains and mountains of trash it creates, which in the global south you see littering streams and streets. The bottled water Industry also threatens ecosystems, uh, places um, like in Northern California and around the country, there are citizens groups fighting water takings where these companies come in and start mining bottled water and start affecting the ecosystem. But generally, most bottled water is simply tap water anyway that's been filtered. And if you do have a problem with your tap water, it's a lot cheaper to um, get a, uh, a water filter and carry around your, your bottle of water. The, the last problem with bottled water is it, it really is threatening our public water supplies because people have lost their faith in tap water. They don't want to put the money out to fix our aging infrastructure, and we have a $22 billion dollar gap every year. We want people to have faith in their public water. We want clean and affordable water for everyone. We don't want to have an elite system where rich people can afford bottled water and everybody else drinks sewage water. So we're asking people to go to our website at foodandwaterwatch.org and take a personal pledge to use tap water whenever possible. Pipes and infrastructure for our public water utilities, for all of our water utilities, are in many cases 100 years old. Built, you know, 100 years ago, in some cases as far back as the Civil War era. And there, they, there hasn't been a lot of put, uh, reinvestment into those pipes. EPA drinking water needs survey determined that the U.S. Uh, water infrastructure will need $276 billion dollars uh, over the next 20 years. The issues around private bottling and sale of drinking water, among other things, address both water as a resource, in other words, the legal right to extract the water for private gain and profit, and the delivery of water, here implying the need to replace the public provision of drinking water with pricey, privately supplied bottled water, which is claimed to be purer or more sanitary. 
And so it gives, it bad mouths public water and gets the public uh, less willing to accept water coming publicly. In the year 1800, well, nothing was provided by the public. Uh, it was 94% private, 5% public. There's a gradual progression all the way through. It's up to 86% public now. Yeah. And you can see that generally, um, this is by the 1960s, everybody, there over 80% of it was public. And I call your attention to towns over 500,000, the lo very large, I mean, to cities over uh, 500,000, the very large ones, they had the uh, highest percentage of everybody, 88.4% public. And uh, basically, the red areas are the ones where less than 50% of the population uh, uses improved drinking water sources. One out of five worldwide are without water. The thing is, too, that as this battle goes on to get water to more people, of course, the population of the Earth is growing, too. The Clean Water Act was passed in 1972 uh, over Richard Nixon's veto, and uh, that there was a bipartisan uh, a majority in the Senate and the House that really thought it was important to have zero discharge of pollutants into the nation's waters and make the water fishable and swimmable. Drinking water wasn't part of that mission. And uh, in 1974, on the heels of uh, um, some alarming reports about the Mississippi water that people were drinking in New Orleans uh, and, and some other uh, problems with uh, drinking water sources around the country, the Safe Drinking Water Act was passed. Um, uh, so uh, that's the Safe Drinking Water Act passed in 1974. Both the Safe Drinking Water Act and the Clean Water Act, as you know, are dependent on the states as the major uh, uh, partners and implementers of, of those laws. What is it, what was the political force and the public health reason that built the drinking water infrastructure and did the early source water protection in our country? Cholera primarily, cholera primarily. So we had three cholera epi epidemics that came through uh, uh, in starting in the mid-1800s and going through the early 1900s. The political will was muster who led the campaigns in our communities to uh, do sanitation and to make the tremendous investments by governments and by, by citizens for, uh, to make uh, drinking water source protection. Yeah. Yeah. It was non-voting women who were in charge of all sorts of they didn't call them non-governmental organizations or civil society organizations, but who were in charge of all sorts of organizations in our communities that were concerned about protecting the family and health and the moral turpitude uh, of our communities and who really rose up and invented um, uh, the public health movement, who invented uh, the sanitation movement, who invented uh, community organizing, who invented social work, and it was those women who created the political will that put in place the infrastructure that we're still drawing on today. And in some places, like in my hometown in Washington, D.C., it's literally the pipes and the buildings that were built uh, from the Civil War time on that we're still drawing from. And in some places, that, that the technology that we put in place and the physical plants that we put in place, it was in that time that we made the last really major infusion of technology or funding. The, the last problem with bottled water is it, it really is threatening our public water supplies because people have lost their faith in tap water. They don't want to put the money out to fix our aging infrastructure. And we have a 22 billion dollar gap every year. Take a personal pledge to use tap water whenever possible. Help support a clean water trust fund that would be a federal pot of money like the highway trust fund that would support municipal utilities trying to fix their infrastructure. Let's have that first future where everybody has clean and affordable water become a reality.